Hello and welcome to episode 23 of the Kingfisher Knits podcast. My name is Madeline and I'm talking to you from um, my home in Zurich where I live with my husband and our two small children. I am though originally from the UK and this is a place where I talk about my knitting. You can find me as Madeline Windsor on Ravelry. I have um, the website madelinewindsor.com. Um, I'm also Kingfisher Knits on Instagram and Twitter. I put all the links of where you can find me down below and you also find the show notes to this episode um, all listed down below the, vis the video in the video description box. We also have a group on Ravelry called the Kingfisher Knits group which is a group both for people knitting my knitting patterns which I sell on Ravelry and for people taking part in um, cows and chatter based um, which comes sorry from the podcast. I am a knitting designer and also a knitting pattern tech editor. I am going to start off this episode with some fun stuff, which means prizes. So we had a couple of cows running, which wrapped up at the end of March. This is the first time I've podcasted in April. Yes, we are now in April. This is very much spring here in Zurich. It's actually 20 degrees Celsius here today, which is really lovely. Anyway, and the sun is shining, so I've you know, probably I'm going to look a bit bleached out at some points when the sun, and there are some clouds around. Anyway, I drew for prizes before the podcast, so um, I have everything ready here. The, the cows that I have drawn for were the garments, uh, sorry, the garments first cow, um, and also for the shawl cow I had going for my, um, for two just shawl designs I released last year, which were the Artemis shawl and the Stracciatella shawl. So, First, I am going to tell you the prize, show you, sorry, the prize for um, the garments cowl. So this is a beautiful project bag from Fondant Fibre. Fondant Fibre is in the UK. It has a lovely little heart progress keeper there. Um, I'm going to put a couple more just little bits and bobs um, in here, but I've also so already put in um, this beautiful sparkly mini skein, which is very, I thought it was very appropriate for spring and also some washi tape. So I will put another few little bits and bobs, but obviously the main prize here is the bag. Um, and the winner of this prize is a Dragon Dame on Ravelry. You actually entered, um, sorry, and your, did I write your name here? I thought I had, apparently not. Anyway, you are in Georgia in the US and you um, won this for your Winter Soul which um, is another pattern by Jennifer Steingast, which you knit. But um, I know that you also en you entered several garments in that cow, so that was great. So I will be, if you can get in contact with me um, via Ravelry, or um, you can also contact me via email, which all the information is down below, then um, you can give me your address and I can get that sent out to you. I'm hoping to send out prizes um, within about a week from now. So hopefully if people get back to me, I can do that. Um, and the next prize, which was for the shawl cowl, was this yarn, which is a, um, a skein of DK weight yarn from Art Yarns. No, you are. Hand-painted stripes. So I, I haven't actually um, looked to see if I think this is self-striping. I think it must be, though. And anyway, so it's a DK weight, 100% merino wool. Really, really beautiful yarn there. Um, and that's going in this little project bag, which I got from the Yarn Tart in the UK. Um, and it is Honk if you knit last night. And I also threw a little spring washi tape in there too. So this has been won by Stephanie. Stephanie, I don't want to pronounce this uh, wrong, but it is Ray here 22 on um, Ravelry. So that's R A H I E R. 2222 22, and you're in Belgium and you knit the Artemis shawl and actually she I had said that people in that cal had double entry if they used yarn from the dye which I collaborated with in making that design and she did but she only entered it once so I kind of felt that it's appropriate that she won she only put her name in once when she could have put it in twice and she still won so that's the shawl cal prize I also decided to pull for a prize from the chatter thread of the garment first cowl as that was a lot of fun and I'm not closing that thread a couple of people also are still working on some projects that they were um, knitting as part of that I kind of am so um, we're going to leave that open for now 
and the Patton Prize winner is Monica Marie, so the name Monica and Marie, all written together um, on Ravelry, and you're in Edmonton, Canada, and the, pat the prize for that will be a Patton Prize, um, you can choose any of um, my patterns from my Ravelry store, and I will gift that to you, so if you can also please um, let me know which of those patterns you would like, probably best by a message, probably best by a message on Ravelry. Okay, so that was a lot of fun. Um, I had mentioned a couple of times ago that um, I would love, love to do another cowl, and given the release of my Colleheen shawl, which used three different yarn bases, I was thinking of a mixed base cowl. So I haven't started it off yet, but I, I actually have seen some people have already finished their Colleheen shawls, which given it was released less than a month ago is kind of pretty amazing. But I'm going to say that those are going to be valid too. I know they've already finished them, but um, given that this was inspired by that, my Colleheen shawl, even if you knit it before the date that the cowl sort of, you know, I officially announced it and got kicked off, uh, you can still enter that. So um, I'm going to start out chatter threads and FO threads for a mixed base cowl in the Ravelry group, and you can also use the hashtag mixed base cowl on um, Instagram. I've, all, I've been using, I've already been using that when I was uh, promoting the Colleheen shawl. So the cow has begun. Um, I think it's going to last at least two months. So that would take us, so for sure, to the end of May, probably into June, but it could be a little bit longer. Um, I wasn't thinking of a very long uh, cow because I wasn't thinking of this so much as garments, although there's no, I mean, there are garments out there that use mixed bases. Just a quick summary of what I mean by mixed bases. I will also put this information in those Ravelry threads. I am not meaning that you, you know, knit uh, a shawl where you have two fingering weight yarns and they have different percentages of merino and nylon or that wasn't really what I was going for. Here I'm going for either you're knitting something which has really very different bases in it, like my Collie Hinshaw, but there are other ones out there. I can think of the Birds of a Feather by Andrea Mowry, just as one example, where you're pairing a fingering weight merino yarn with a lace weight uh, mohair silk yarn. That totally counts, anything like that. Or you're pairing fingering weight with DK, or chunky with fingering. There are some quite interesting patterns out there that do all kinds of things. Um, I would also say, you know, if you're going to hold mohair and another yarn double to knit a garment, of course, that would count. So there we go. You see, there could be garments. So if there is a, um, interest in a chatter thread that people are going to be casting on garments for this, then I guess I will, I, I will think of a longer, um, what's the word? Deadline. Um, I would say it will also count for me if you are knitting, uh, so there's different bases is... Sorry, different bases is kind of the point, but here I'm counting, you know, using different weights of a similar base, you know, also counts. So if you're pairing, as I said, you know, a lace weight, maybe it's a lace weight merino, and you're pairing it with a fingering or DK weight merino, that's that's also okay. Um, if you're not sure, just pop something in the thread. I'm always um, checking the threads fairly regularly, and I will let you know if I think that, um, you are, you know, fully embracing the idea of the cow, or if the idea you had doesn't quite match. Um, but I want it to be inclusive, and I think everybody wants to join in and have fun. Um, so I'm really excited about that cow. Okay, that's all the admin and prizes and cows out the way. I have, I felt like I didn't have that much to talk to you about, and as I it was one of those things where as I was gathering the things, I was kind of overwhelmed. So I think I might cut out a couple of things that I had thought to tack on to the end of, of this episode. I'm going to dive straight into whips. I have two whips to show you. They're exactly the same whips as I showed you last week, uh, last week, last episode. And um, I mean, this isn't a disclaimer. This is a podcast about what I knit. So you see what I knit. And if I don't knit much, you see that I didn't knit much. So I'm not going to apologize for a lack of content. Um, since I last podcasted, I had one week where I feel like I knit quite a lot. And basically all that you're going to see now is what I knit in that week. I did knit some other things that I'm not showing, but that's because I can't show them. Um, and other bits and bobs, but not a lot more. And, and last week, this, then this, this last week, I've hardly knit at all. And I just stopped. I just ran out of steam. And I thought, you know, people talk about losing their knitting mojo, and I get that. I know what that means. And I was thinking, oh, I've just lost my mojo a bit. And, uh, you know, that... That really scared me when I first thought about that because when you are someone who really likes to knit and it's a big part of your life because you're also designing things, I, I, I freaked out probably for about 24 hours and then I just realised I was really tired. And it's not that I'd lost my knitting mojo, it's that I'd lost 
my life mojo. I, that sounds really extreme. I was really tired and I was managing to do what I had to do, you know, normal things. I also have another job and I have small kids and I was just about managing. I mean, things were not always easy, but you know, but nothing, there was, I just didn't have energy to do anything else and I just didn't want to pick up anything much. I did a couple of rounds on things and so anyway, I'm just saying it happens and um, there are different reasons that at some point or another we knit more or less. Anyway, so the first thing I'm going to show you is this um, shawl that I've been knitting for my aunt. Um, this I'm knitting in mostly fondant fibre and I'll tell you in a minute there's also some other yarn in it. And this was um, a sock set that I got from her um, in as part of her club last year, so in June 2017. Um, it came with a main skein and a mini skein. I swapped out the mini skein for another, um, some other yarn I had in this design. So I already finished working with that and this, just for completeness, I'm just going to show it to you now. Um, this is the Hello Gorgeous colorway from Lolo Did It on her Everyday Sock Base, which is her 7525 Merino Nylon. So I started off, this is a shawl as I said, I started it off with that colour and then I worked into the second colour, oh no, I didn't show you that, which is, this is it in the skein, Lavender Sunset, it's a very accurate colour representation there. So my short, my aunt had asked for a shawl, my great aunt had asked for a shawl, which would be um, sort of pinks and, pinks and mauves, and I should show them a picture saying that this has also got, you know, yellows and these golden tones in, but she thought it was beautiful. So I, it's hard to show off properly because it's, you know, a top-down shawl, there's a lot quite, there's not a ton of stitches because I didn't make this huge as I explained last time round, I didn't want, she didn't want a big shawl. Um, oh no, now I've got tangled. Just a second. Okay. If I stretch it out a little bit you can get more of an idea. So I have done, it's a top-down shawl, I have used this shape which I would say is, you know, it's more than a half circle so that it should wrap around her shoulders nicely. It has um, this first colour up here and then I've done single row stripes into the second colour, which hopefully you can just about see there. But they fade, I mean they're very similar um, in certain parts of the, of, of the yarn, has almost exactly the same colour. Um, I didn't, not sure I said last time, but this whole thing has an I-cord um, border or edge to it that's been worked as you're working the shawl. Um, which I also wanted to use here because I thought it both, I both love how it looks and it adds some, um, it's stretchy enough for when I'm going to block it but it adds some structure to it which I think um, will make it also easier for her that she's not worried about, you know, even if you do garter edges sometimes they roll a bit or flip a bit and I thought that would be nice for her. Again, she's not, you know, a knitter herself. And so I worked all the way down, I've done a few little stripes in garter down here. Now the sun's gone in, so of course the light's changed. And now I'm working my border, my knitted on border. So that started up down here. And I will try and show you, this will of course be much easier to see once this is blocked. But this is the border. Which I really, really like. I think it's really, really pretty. And uh, yeah, so this is not a huge shawl as you can see, but as I said last time, um, the way it's worked, when I write it up, I will be including, I, if not explicitly, uh, bunches of different sizes, I will be including very clear information on how to, um, what's the word, customise it if you have more yarn and you want to use more. So this is, again, in the end, this is going to be just about a bit more than like probably a full skein of fingering weight yarn unless you have some of those big, bigger ones that are more like 450 meters, but I think it's going to be a bit more, it's going to be definitely over 400 meters worth of yarn. But as you see, I paired it with some leftover yarn that I had before to make a full skein, uh, so a full skein plus a bit to work here. So I'm really, it's at a stage where it looks a little bit odd, sorry there, but I'm really, really happy with it and I've really enjoyed working this border. It's, um, it's also nice because it's not very many stitches, the border, and it's not that many rows, so that's one repeat there. So um, I think I've worked 13 repeats so far and it took me a couple of hours and not and a couple of hours where I was watching the kids in the park and stuff so I wasn't you know solidly solidly knitting away. Um, so it's actually pretty quick to work so I'm, I'm just I'm just really 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 enjoying it. I'm working this on four millimeter weight 3.75 millimeter high high sharps and what I'm doing is because 
when you work in applied border, a lot of people often use a DPN because you're working across your border stitches each time knitting every, every pair of rows. You're working one stitch together of the border with one stitch of the body to keep consuming up and work along, you know, attaching it to the to the body of the shawl. Um, and so if you're working with your uh, circular needle like this, sometimes people find it's a bit annoying, anno annoying, annoying, because when you're turning around and you've just got a few stitches on here, you're moving the weight of the rest of the shawl that's attached to this um, cord a bit. So I don't, a lot of people use DPNs when they're working, uh, or one DPN, let's say, for the extra, for their other needle when they're working an applied border. I don't have very many DPNs at all, and I certainly didn't have ones in this size. So what I did is these, these are interchangeable, interchangeable needles. I, when I'm working on it, I unscrew that. I should really put a stopper on the end so that the stitches don't fall off the end. I did already drop them off the end once, but by now I'm, I've worked enough stitches that they nicely bunch up on the rest of the cord, and I'm just working on this. And again, um, that means I've got nothing on the other end of this of this um, needle, but there's only 14 um, or so stitches to work, work each time. They go on there, I turn them around, and I never stop, obviously, on a row where um, I've got some stitches on here. I work them back onto this needle, or I slip them back onto this needle for when I have to put it away. So just, I, don't, I figure, again, this is something that anybody else could work out, but if you're the first time working applied borders and something is bugging you and you can't quite work out what's not working, maybe try using a DPN or just a, you know an individual needle for that um, for when you're working those few stitches. All right, so that is that shawl, which is bringing me plenty of joy to knit on. The other whip that I wanted to show you is my Radiate sweater. You may have noticed last time round, I did manage to insert a picture, my first ever picture insertion to a video, um, when I was editing. So you were able to see a picture of that. If I remember, I might try and insert the picture again this time, um, but we'll see about that. Um, anyway, so I'm knitting the Radiate sweater by Hohi Locatelli. It is available for individual purchase. I have it as part of the Interpretations Volume 4, which was released last year. And last time I showed you, I was here. I hadn't started, I had done this section, so I brought in the main colour, but I hadn't started where you have these slip stitch columns of the main section yet, so I was here. So now I have finished the yoke, and I am down almost to the waist decreases on the body. And I'm absolutely thrilled with it. So what, uh, if you have a little few things to say about this, which I'm going to say after I tell you what the yarn is. The yarn is from the Wool Kitchen in the UK. This is her tag. This is her Blue Face Leicester um, DK base. So she's Super Wash BFL, 100 grams, 200 meters. The pink is the Geek colorway. And... The other colour I'm using is this. This is the Heterochromia colourway, which is this beautiful elephant grey with these pops of colour. So what I have done, um, what I had been planning to do and what I did do, is I used just one skein of the, of the main colour up here in the yoke. I didn't feel like I wanted three balls of yarn attached to my knitting. And I said if I don't like it, I will rip back and work it alternating. And then I will alternate when I get to the body. So I'm alternating now on the body. This yarn, unfortunately, I've wound up all the skeins now, so I can't show you it in terms of um, how it looks in the skein. Maybe I'll show you it and just pull up this skein here. So it's just a plain skein of yarn. Um, that This is yarn, which is, you have the whole skein, and then one section is dyed, um, is, well, in this case, it's all dye grey. One section was left cream probably and speckles were put on it. So that's in one part of the skein. So every time you go around the full length of the skein, at more or less the same position, there is this section which makes these, these speckles, you know, makes this pale bit with the bright colours. That is always going to pool or flash or do something in some way because unless you're constantly changing the circumference drastically every round, um, it's always going to collect in one place, especially if you're working in the round, maybe I should say that. So when I was working with one skein, it was pooling in this way, sorry, other way around. 
that you're getting this sort of spiral. And then when my stitch count increased and that's on a point, it started to do with this what's called flashing. So you get these sections here. If I had alternated, I would have had all of that still going on, but I would have had it broken up. Like down here, you can see there's pooling going on, but the pooling is broken up every other row because every other row, in one round, I'm knitting with one yarn, which happens to put its section here, that's the section of color. Then I'm knitting with the next skein, which doesn't have the color coming here. And I'm knitting again with the, pre with the next skein, with the previous skein, sorry. And in this case, it's spiraling around, so they're not lining up on top of each other. So I'm just getting this sort of broken spiral effect. And every now and then, those spirals meet, like here. See, when you get them across consecutive rounds. I don't mind. I mean, there's nothing you can do about, like, with this type of yarn, you're going to get something. So I'm happy that I'm, it's breaking up in this way by using two skeins. That's the back. And I, I'm fine with that. Would I, I was wondering if it would be better if the yoke was also broken up, but I, I don't know, I don't, I don't, I really don't mind it, like my eye, the computer always, I film on my laptop and it always adds more contrast between colours, so it draws your eye to the difference. When you're looking at it in person, you see it of course, but my eye is drawn to the pink more in the yoke. Anyway, the end of the story, I'm happy with it. So, what I have done, I've discovered many times now with knitting sweaters, unless I knit something which is like zero ease or, or even if they are zero ease, but you know, fitted, so fitted to the body with decreases and, and stuff, or something that has negative ease, which of course therefore is fitted to the body, I have always got, um, if I have it so it fits well over the bust, so it, you know, it's going up, skimming over the chest, and then there might be some ease down here, so I'm just using what I'm wearing as an example. I'm gonna talk about this in a second, actually. Um, often, in the back, I have a lot of extra fabric. So I guess my back is, you know, I mean, everyone's back, I think, is curved in, you know, a little bit. Um, but you just, you don't, I, I think Amy mentioned it recently, when Amy has Stranded Dye Works, and the Stranded podcast mentioned it, you know, I've got boobs on the front, but, you know, not on the back, so you need less fabric often. And there are some patterns which have, you know, back shaping or back darts or waist and back or double waist decreases that kind of, you know, go down that bit of the back, so not just at the sides. Anyway, both in my not-so-faded that I knit and in my arboreal, there is two... I don't mind how it looks, but if you wanted it to be more flattering, there is more fabric at the back than there needs to be. So, I tried this on after I had a few rows um, done after the underarm. Yoke fits great, Loved, was really thrilled with it. And I noticed at the back, it was fine too because it's, that's the part where it's all pulling over your bust. But I pulled it down a little bit just to see and I, I thought I'm going to try to do some back decreases. So here the markers are at the sides for the waist decreases which are going to start at some point. But these purple markers here, where are they? There we go. These purple markers here. I counted across, so they're sort of about, you know, one third in each from the side, from the underarm side, and I'm doing a few decreases here, I started them before the waist, and then I'll stop, you know, when I've done the waist decreases, I'll probably stop them, and I'll try it on and see how much I think I have to bring them out again. Maybe it won't work, it's an experiment, but that's something I'm doing. Okay, so that is my radiate sweater which I am very much in love with, and that's probably what got the most love in the days where I was knitting, like, I mean, honestly, some days I was knitting one round, and I, there were two, at least two days that I knit nothing, not a stitch, so, really tired, totally exhausted, so. Then, I don't have any FOs, really, to show you. I have a few things I wanted to talk about, though. The first is, this is my Blofjord sweater, this is the Blofjord pla pa platen? pattern by the lovely Ellie of Skeindeer, Skeindeer Knits podcast, and I was a test knitter for this. I mentioned last time, that last time, a couple of times ago, that I did have a bit too much um, space here on the neck, and there were some corrections made to the pattern because of testing. And I think my size was one of them. So um, the short row shaping for the back of the neck had changed. So I like this. You can see that the back, the, there's more blue 
between the yoke there than there is at the front. So that had changed. So I decided anyway, given that I wasn't super happy with how the neckband was on mine, that I had picked up the stitches, cut off the top of the thing and was gonna re-engineer this section sort of bottom up. So I worked that, the short rows according to the pattern, and then I worked the ribbing, and it was, it was, it's definitely better. So the general shaping of the neck now is really, really great for me. I really like, like it. It looks good. Um, I'd redid the ribbing as well, and it looked, the ribbing still had bag to it. And it's my gauge. It's really my gauge in this yarn. I really struggled, and I could have gone down a needle size here. I already knit this blue this time on a smaller needle size than I had knit the stocking stitch before. But it's still, you can still, I can still tell that it's a, a slightly looser gauge, you can see, you know, looser gauge than the rest, than the colour work. Um, so what I did was I pulled out the ribbing and I just decided to knit like a little rolled hem. So what I did was working, I started to work inside out and I just knit around I think three or four times. So that means this side is reverse stocking stitch and it, it rolls in, so it just makes this nice little edge which is nice, it's neat. I don't really care that it doesn't match these. I had actually considered also ripping out the ribbing here because this is a problem for me. The ribbing for, ribbing for me on the needle size I was having to use with this very fine, whole super, super soft yarn was just not, it just wasn't good for me. And um, as I said, I think if I work with this yarn again in the future, I either avoid ribbing or I also am interested in holding it double. So I might rip back this uh, ribbing too and make it a similar type of just little edging there. It doesn't bother me so much at the bottom of the garment because there anyway, the ribbing isn't you know serving a purpose, it just is a continuation of the garment anyway. It means that it doesn't it doesn't roll, of course. So anyway, very happy to have my Blowfield sweater again finished, blocked, and I have been wearing it. The other couple of things that I wanted to talk about um, are two pattern <coughs> two patterns of mine. I do not have the actual samples here to show you because both of them are with Sweet Georgia Yarns in Canada. These are the comp this is the company that I um, collaborated with for these designs. The first is a design called Moravia. It is a hat design. I will be putting a picture of it up here while I'm talking about it so you can see what I'm talking about. Um, it, the pattern is in three different sizes. It has um, a twisted one by one rib hem, and then it has um, some. It's a really nice to work these um, twisted stitch cables, um, which are worked and form um, diamond shapes on the hat, uh, which you'll be seeing <laughs> in the picture. It's a little bit tricky, but I have got it to like, look at for me. Um, and then at the end, after the cabling is finished, also that the diamond pattern is finished, you have um, all of those cables continue to swirl to the top of the crown and it's finished with a pom-pom. It is um, a, it's a hat designed to have a bit of slouch, which all of these other in the pattern, and I worked it in this yarn here. Um, so this is Sweet Georgia's Superwash DK, and this is the colour Racing Green, and you're not getting it at all there. It's coming up teal, it's much, 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 much more green. Let's see if I get it close how. It's almost there as to how green it is, but here for some reason you're seeing it super, super dark. I also have this little ball here if I hold it really close to the camera. Mm. It's still looking too blue there. Anyway, maybe the photo that I put up will look more accurate in terms of colour. But anyway, so it's worked in this beautiful yarn which really um, allows, it's got really, really fantastic stitch, stitch definition and um, was lovely to work with. It is um, 234 metres or 256 yards um, for 115 grams. Yeah, so this is the colour racing green, as I said. So that pattern was released a couple of days ago. Moravia it is now available for purchase on Ravelry or in Sweet George, on Sweet George's website. So I will put the links for that, the links for that down below. That was actually a, a real joy to knit that pattern, uh, to knit that sample, and it was really hard. That was one of the hardest things I've I've had to part with when I, I mean, I know I get it back in the end, but um, it was one of the hardest uh, samples I've ever knit to like part with because I wanted it straight away. When I, and I finished it around a time where one could still wear a hat like that um, all the time. Um, right now we're having quite warmer spring weather. And of course it's different all over the world, different places. And uh, so a hat like that would only be good. I mean, it's still cold at night here. So 
the hat like that would only be good, you know, first thing in the morning when you've got to go out. But um, when I finished it, there was still snow and stuff. So I was really sad when I sent it off. Anyway, so that is um, one, pat one pattern to talk about. The other one is a pattern which I released with Sweet Georgia a year ago. So as part of their spring collection, volume two, I think it was, which was um, last spring. And that is the Budelli shawl. Um, I will again put up a picture here. Sorry, it's called Bordelli. It's it's a stole, really, because it's a long rectangle worked in really beautiful, delicate um, filigree lace, which is very, very simple to work. And um, I found it really a joy to knit from start to finish. Um, the name is inspired by... Um, Bordelli is an island off of the coast of Sardinia, which is an island of Italy. And they have pink sand beaches. Um, so this was... Um, this was the perfect name for this shawl for me. And um, that is now available for sale in my Ravelry store. <coughs> um, and so what I have done also to celebrate its re-release, um, it is, you can get 20% off with the code SPRING at S-P-R-I-N-G, SPRING, all in capital letters. Um, and that is valid until the end of Monday, April um, 16th, is it? Oh gosh, now I've got stuck about the dates. So today is the 12th, so yes, I think it was the 16th. So Monday next week, basically, until the end of Monday. But also given that now it's in my store, my own Ravelry store, it also means it's part of my ongoing three for two um, on patterns. So you can also take advantage of that should you be interested in that pattern. Uh, again, I don't have the sample for that. It's still with Sweet Georgia. They wanted to keep hold of it for this spring, um, also for this spring season, and I said that that was fine. Um, fine by me, but yeah, it's a wonderful spring, uh, spring into summer knit, so check it out if you are interested. So those are my uh, talk about finished objects. They're all things that I finished, but I just don't have those here with me. And in this last portion, I uh, actually have um, a review for you. So I was contacted uh, a few weeks ago by the team at Knit Crate and they asked me if I would be interested in receiving um, some of their crates, their membership crates, sorry, um, and reviewing them in whichever way I wish and I said absolutely, I would be very, very happy to do that. I, I have heard of Knit Crate and I had seen them, I had checked them out a couple of times um, and seen some other people talking about their Knit Crates so I was very happy to receive them. So thus far I have not done reviews on this channel, but I wanted to say that um, they are not paying me for this review. Any review that I will ever give will be my opinion, my true, honest opinion on, on anything. Um, and I really, really mean that. I think, I hope that people who have watched me so far have known that I'm a pretty honest person. I, you know, I say what I think about something, if I find something interesting or, or not, I will always, I will always tell people. Um, and what they have done is they have provided me with two things. One is an affiliate link, which if you use that link to then go and purchase your Knit Crate membership, I will get a small percentage of, of that. Um, it's not much. Um, I don't expect to be making money off of it, but that's part of the um, uh, that's part of what they what they offer when they ask someone to review their products. But that does not mean that they've bought my opinion or anything. If you should not want to do that because you maybe you're interested in getting a knit crate but you are uh, against affiliate links or what have you that's fine just search for knit crate in knit crate in google and um, buy it that way they have also though given me a discount code which um i will put down below which is for anybody who um who would like to order their their knit crate they can also take use of that discount code which i believe is 20 percent off of your first month so that is what they are offering us and i was very grateful for that I wanted to say that, um, so Knit Crate work on the basis that you sign up for a subscription, uh, which you can cancel at any time, but otherwise it does auto renew on the first of every month. And each month you receive a package which looks like this. They have four different options cu currently. They do occasionally have special offer crates, um, but they have four different options, which are the Knit Crate membership, which is what I have here. In that you are guaranteed um, at least two skeins of yarn, you get one knitting pattern and one crochet pattern. You also get some discount codes, I think typically on other patterns or the Ravelry store or what have you of the designer 
um, designers which are featured. I also, as far as I understood, all Knit Crate members have 25% off, 20 or 25% off of the Knit Crate shop. So basically, they also have a yarn shop online on their website, and um, this sells uh, certainly sells off any sells off extra yarn that they have for um, each month. So I think the idea being that if somebody really, really wanted the yarn but wasn't signing up for Knit Crate, they someone else can still go and buy that yarn but at the full price. Um, you get quite a heavy discount by signing up for Knit Crate, which I will explain in a second. Um, so someone else can still go and buy the yarn if you know you have that yarn um, and they might still have some available, they can go and get it on the website. Or I think if you know if you wanted an extra skein, it's not guaranteed, but then maybe if you you know got some yarn in your knit crate and you really wanted an, another skein to do a different project or to give someone else or something, you can go there and buy the yarn. There obviously the yarn um has its retail price, not the special price that it gets just for being part of the Knit Crate. Um, but you get 25% off of their shop when you are a member of Knit Crate. Um, one thing that they also have, which I like, they have a link to a de-stash website where people, it's not only for Knit Crate yarns, people seem to be de-stashing other things, but, um, and they also have a Ravelry group on Ravelry where if you get yarn which you didn't particularly, you don't think you're going to use that month around, they make it really easy for you to you know, tell other people, look, I've got this yarn, would you like to swap with some other yarn with me or want to buy it off of me? So, just to let you know. Um, I think they've thought it through. I think it's well, really well thought through, is my point. Anyway, so Knit Crate membership is what I'm going to show you and it's what I just told you. Two skeins, two patterns. They also have the Knit Crate Artisan membership and that has, um, t again, two skeins of um, at least two skeins of yarn, but that is what they call artisan yarn. So as far as I can say, see, all of the yarn that they're doing is hand dyed, but when it's just knit crate or sock crate, that is yarns which are exclusively um, dyed for them and is part, they might be from different, they have different like yarn brands, but that's yarn which is what they call knit crate yarn. So yarns which are dyed, dyed exclusively for knit crate and are just to do with the knit crate brand. When they have the artisan clubs, which they have both the Knit Crate, the Artisan membership, and the Sock Artisan. All of those use um, sort of, they call more specialist yarns that they brought in that, again, were dyed for those, specifically for those Knit Crates, but they're not the Knit Crate branded yarns. They are, um, you know, external, totally indie dyers that they are using for those, for those yarns. And in every case, then the Artisan costs um, a bit more. For the Artisan membership crate, I believe you get two different types of knitting patterns, which also have different levels of difficulty and a little extra always thrown in there. So that's a bit of a different, um, a bit of a bigger package. Um, and for the sock ones, you can either have the sock membership crate, which again is with knitology, uh, sorry, knitology, knit crate yarns, um, and you get one skein of sock yarn. And for the sock artisan club, which costs a little bit more, it's again an external an indie dyed one, and you get a little bit, a little extra every time, I'm um, in the package. So, um, all of their crates, the cost of the crate includes shipping, which I think is fantastic to anywhere in the world. So you're not paying, you're paying exactly, everything's included. Is the point. So for this Nick, for the biggest thing that they talk about, I would say in general, is the, the what the membership they, they sent me. You have um, within that. Two skeins of yarn, typically which are valued at around twenty to twenty-five dollars per skein. That's fifty dollars worth of yarn, um, and you get a cup. You get two patterns, which are valued at five dollars each, and you had the shipping, which you didn't pay for. So they they quote um, they typically quote a value of sixty-three dollars retail, and you've paid twenty-four ninety-nine for um, for the kit for the crate. I certainly think it's it's very good value. Whatever else. I mean, one might say, depending on what might come in them, they're very good value. And from what I've seen from other people having, they always seem to be very good yarns. So, this is the yarn that came in this month, April's kit. Um, kit. Crate. I keep saying kit. Crate. So this is Ordine Wool's yarn, so by Knit Crate. So this is what I mean. They might have different brand names here, but these are yarns which are uh, what they call Knit Crate yarns, whereas the Artisan Clubs all have completely independent um, yarns. These are two skeins of Superwash DK 100% Merino, 215 meters for 100 grams. Um, yeah, all Ordine wools are exclusively hand dyed for knit crate. Knit crate. This is the colorway Prickly Pear. 
So they had four different colorways um, for this um, kit, for this, this month's crate. Um, I've sort of seen, I think it was a brown one, a red one, a blue one, and this green one. Um, and you know, this is the thing, when you sign up for something um, like this, you're getting a great deal, but you don't have a choice um, beforehand. The way Knit Crate works, if you've seen someone's crate and it's still the same month and they're still available, you can still go up and get it. So it's not that only by pre, you know, by ordering and signing up um, in advance can you be sure to get a certain month's yarn, but the colour you can't pick. So um, that, again, that's why their de-stash option and their Ravelry group is useful, that you can de-stash um, or swap your yarn with someone else. So you get the green, someone gets the blue, and you can say you want to swap. What I think is really cool about this yarn, and I did not realise the moment I pulled it out of the bag, excuse me, it's, n I thought it was a variegated yarn, it's not, it's a gradient yarn. And that you can see best in this pattern. So this is the knit pattern which came this time. So you start down here and you knit all the way around, you know, with one skein and then the next skein and you finish down here. So it's a gradient, it's DK weight gradient yarn, which is really fantastic if you ask me. So. so you can see there, there's a whole you know, section which is this color, and then it goes to this color, and then there's another one, and then the darkest. Gradient yarn. Anyway, it's really, really beautiful. Um, the yarn feels great. It feels very much like um, Superwash Merino DK yarn. So um, there's no from what I can tell, there's no um, evidence that there's um, any poor quality or what have you. They Knit Crate also recently put up their prices just by a few dollars and jiggled up their memberships a little bit. Um, and they said that this was especially because of a little bit of shipping and also because of the price of Superwash wool has gone up in general since their um, since they started out. And so in order to be able to pay um, the the either the wool producers or the indie yarn dyers um, for the case of the artisan kits, crates, keep saying kits, I'm going to keep saying kits, they, they up their prices a little bit. But yeah, this, so this is $24.99, you get both patterns, you get, sorry, the other pattern is this, that shows you one of the other colorways, is this um, crochet pattern for this cowl. So you get two skeins of yarn, at least, depending on the weight, and um, you might get more, I think, even. If they, if they have 50, if they have 50 gram skeins, I don't know how exactly how that always works. But um, yeah, and you get two patterns. I'm not going to show what's on the other side of this. So this is the theme. Each month they have a theme and all of their kits are meant to be, all of their crates are meant to be, um, you know, united by the theme. And on the back here, I also there are also some codes for um, a certain percentage off of patterns from the different designers Ravelry stores. So you also get that. I personally really genuinely was um, impressed by this. Um, this is not my colour in particular, so that is of course uh, something an issue, but I have been knitting with a lot more green recently, not always by my own choice. I think what I'm going to, I mean I'm very tempted by this yarn, given that it has this beautiful, beautiful gradient effect. I really, really think it's beautiful. Um, so I am very tempted by it, by keeping it, but I have thought that each time when the knit crate comes in, um, you know, I've been asked to review it probably, you know, because I have uh, this podcast and so I want to give back and to make a giveaway for the, um, what's the word, giveaway with this yarn. So I think that's what I'm going to do um, also this this time around. As beautiful as this yarn is, um, I mean, really, it really is beautiful. I think somebody else um, who you know, specifically would like to win it so they know that they would like this yarn and um, we'll put it to really beautiful use. So I'm gonna set up a um, thread in the Ravelry group, and um, maybe for future crates that they sent me, I will keep them for cows. But um, for this first one, for this first review, I'm going to just directly set up a giveaway thread in the Ravelry group. You need to go along there, um, and the prompt will just be, uh, what would you like to knit with this yarn? So there are in total 430 meters of this yarn. One thing I will say is that the pattern of this, they give it to me directly in my Knit Crate membership, um, which is what I effectively was given to do this, um, for the, 
sorry, my Knit Crate membership. So I have a membership with them online, is the point. Um, so I can't give away these patterns. What I will do is include the card where you have the discount codes um, in order to be able to, to get them and get some other patterns if you would like. But I can think of many, I'm sure there are many other beautiful patterns that you could knit with this gradient yarn. Okay, so I'm going to set up, that thread will be set up in the Ravelry group and you can go and take a look. Um, and enter if you, for a chance to win, to win this knit crate from this time around. And yeah, so that was really, really nice of them to ask me. And um, I will put all of those links, as I said, if you're interested in signing up um, for a knit crate membership down below. Um, yeah, I did want to, one thing they say on their website, and I think it's really, um, for me, I would li always like to, it's not a warning, but like, to be careful. If you set up, if you make a Knit Crate membership during the month of April, let's say, we're in April, you will be sent the crate for that month. So even though the crates normally go out at the beginning of the month, if there are crates left, you will be sent the crate for that month. Even if you sign up on the very last day of the month, you will be sent the knit crate from that month. And then on the first of the next month, the crate, your subscription will renew, auto-renew. So just to be aware of that, um, that if you were trying to just sign up for one month because then you, you decided you were going to cancel or something, which of course, you know, you're free to do, um, don't do it on the last day of the month <laughs> because then you'll get two crates when you weren't, if you weren't planning on. Just wanted to say that. Okay. That is everything I had to talk to you about this time around. Um, it's been a pleasure as ever and um, I already feel a bit more energetic just having talked to you all. Um, I always forget to say welcome to any new viewers and thank you to those who are coming back and thank you for you to new viewers for checking me out. I always forget to say that at the beginning but it just goes without saying. I'm very very happy when anyone decides to stop by and ha even happier still when people you know comment or contact me by another way. I really really enjoy it so please feel free um, if you had anything to say to just say so and um, yeah so I think that I will oh gosh the sun came out again and the camera is not adjusting I'm just really white I will say goodbye to you now um, I hope that any of the prize winners get in touch with me as soon as possible so I can get your packages out to you in the mail and I'm really looking forward to the mixed base cal and hearing about what you're going to knit in that and I'm also really really excited to be able to have this knit crate giveaway Okay, that's everything for now. Happy spring to everyone, and I will see you in a couple of weeks. Bye.